Hello architects and developers. Are you a serverless application developer and are struggling a little bit with testing, particularly with really slow feedback loops as you push your application to the cloud, run integration tests, see that something broken, make a change and then push it up again. Well, in this video, I want to show you how you can use the power of local emulation to actually speed up the feedback loops with particular parts of your serverless applications. In this case, when you're using DynamoDB as your data store. Now, before I get started, I just want to caveat this with the fact that I used to be one of the biggest critics of local emulation, particularly trying to emulate the entire AWS cloud locally on your machine for the purposes of testing. And that's because there's a whole bunch of things that you just can't test with local emulation. I am an access and permissions, native service integrations if you're sending a message from SNS to EventBridge to SQS. These kind of things just can't be tested locally. And for them things, keep testing in the cloud. Unit test locally, integration test against actual cloud resources. But for things like databases and persistence layers, using local emulation can really speed up your feedback loops, especially if you start to integrate that with things like the AWS CDK. Because with the power of the CDK, you can actually reference your infrastructure code from your unit test project. If your unit test is written in .NET, your infrastructure code is written in .NET, you can reference them together. And then using the power of the open source project test containers, you can actually start up Docker containers as part of your unit tests, run all your initialization code and then tear them down again afterwards. So that's what you're gonna learn about in this video, how you can use the test container project in your unit testing frameworks to really, really, really speed up the feedback loops for your serverless application development. Let's get straight into it. Over 70% of you listening to this video aren't actually subscribed or set up for notifications to this channel. So I'd really, really appreciate it if you could scroll down, hit that subscribe button and ding that notification bell. That tells me that the content I'm creating actually matters to you. And I promise you that if you go ahead and subscribe, I will keep on producing content that matters to you. Thanks for watching. And let's start with the tool itself. This is the website for the Test Containers project. And as you can see, it's a framework. It's giving you the power to start up Docker containers and run Docker images using a programming language of your choice. And what that gives you the power to do is to use this as part of your actual tests. And you'll see if you look at the documentation, Test Containers supports Java and .NET, even Rust. You can use Test Containers within these languages to spin up, tear down, configure Docker containers. So for the purpose of this video, let's have a look at how you can do that with .NET. But of course, these same practices, these same patterns will apply for whatever programming language you're using, providing it's one of these in this list, of course. If I jump over to my IDE now, all the code for this, of course, is in the GitHub repo in the link below. And let's start with the actual test project itself. Now I'm using XUnit here as the framework for .NET testing. And as part of XUnit, you have this capability to define what XUnit calls a fixture. A fixture is simply something you can run before any of your tests execute and it'll run once. And then it'll run again at the end to tear things down. And you can use this fixture to actually leverage test containers to start up a container that you can use. So you'll see I've added a couple of NuGet packages to this solution. If I just open up my NuGet package explorer, you see I've got test containers, the actual core test containers library. And then I've got a specific library for both DynamoDB, which we'll use DynamoDB local and for local stack. And we'll come back to local stack in just a minute. To actually configure this now as part of my unit test. And remember this, this code here is gonna run before any of my tests run and it's gonna run just once. And I can use this DynamoDB Builder class, and this comes from that testcontainers.dynamoDB project. And what this allows me to do is, amongst many other things, is to actually set up my port binding. So what I can do here is with this really lovely, actually fluent API, is say uh, I want to bind port 8000 within the container to a random port on my machine. Now, of course, equally, I could say bind port 8000 to port 8000, 
But if you're going to run the same code in CI/CD pipelines and maybe on other developers' machines, your colleagues' machines, you can't guarantee that port 8000 is going to be a free port. So actually setting that's true will just allow test containers to pick a random free port on your machine. And as part of this Fluent API, there's a whole bunch of other options you can override. The entry point, any environment variable, any files you want to mount, there's a whole bunch of things that you can configure here. But for the purpose of this simple example, you're just going to map the port from the container 8000 to a random port on your machine. I'm just going to gloss over this local stack section for a minute. I'll come back to that in just a moment. What you can do then when you actually get the container up and running is you can use this get mapped public port method. And what that method does will give me the port that's been mapped on my machine to port 8000 within the container. So if this container starts up and it maps port 8000 in the container to port 37652 on my machine, this method will return 37652. And then you'll notice I'm setting up an actual service URL here to be a URL on localhost on my machine and then dynamically grabbing that port. What I can do with that then is actually use that URL when I configure the DynamoDB client. When you initialize a DynamoDB client, you can optionally pass in this DynamoDB config object. And with that config object, there's a whole bunch of different things you can configure, things like the region endpoint, your authentication type, and the actual service URL to use. Now, a really important thing to remember here is that if you were to actually specify the region endpoint as part of this configuration, this will override anything you set in the service URL. Really important thing to remember. So if I was to deploy this now and run this test, it would try and use the actual DynamoDB APIs in AP Northeast One. So if you're doing this and you're manually specifying a service URL, make sure that you do not specify the region. And now I've got an instance of my DynamoDB client that I can use to interact with, with DynamoDB running on my local machine. So let's just come back to this local stack thing for a second. If you are not familiar with local stack, local stack is a thing you can run to actually emulate almost the entirety of the AWS cloud on your local machine, SQS, SNS, EventBridge, DynamoDB, you can emulate all of these APIs. Now, an important thing here is that it just emulates the APIs. So if I was to emulate EventBridge, I could make a call to put events on localhost, but I couldn't then hook a Lambda function into the rule of that EventBridge because that's just not how local stack works. It just gives you the APIs and with things like DynamoDB, it will give you the functionality. So you will get the persistence. You can actually store things and retrieve things and it will work just like DynamoDB actually would. One of the downsides I see with this is of course that there's no guarantee that the features in local stack are going to directly marry to the actual features in AWS services. So reInvent is coming up. This video is recorded at the start of November in 2023. There may be some things that are announced at reInvent that won't necessarily be in local stack straight away. So that's just something to be aware of if you're doing things with local stack and local emulation. But for simple cases like this, where you're just trying to emulate DynamoDB and store stuff and retrieve stuff, why not? Fast feedback loops. When you use this local stack builder to set up local stack, you get this additional method of get connection string. And this get connection string method will just return you a string that looks something like this, but giving you that exact port that local stack has been started up on. Now, where this gets really interesting, and actually one of my other criticisms of using emulators is that Historically, you might have had to replicate a lot of your code. So you might have had your infrastructure as code, Terraform, SAM, CDK, and that would have defined your DynamoDB table, your partition key, your sort key. And then you'd have had to replicate all that logic into whatever it is in your tests that actually created that resource in your emulator, be that DynamoDB local or local stack. So you've got to remember to kind of transfer that code. If you change your partition key, you've got to remember to change that in your test code as well. But with the power of the AWS CDK, you can now actually reference your infrastructure definition in your unit test project and use your actual infrastructure definition to create the resources for your tests. And that's what you see is happening here. So right up at the top of this setup code, I'm creating a new instance of this database props object. And this database props object comes from this infrastructure definition project under my infra folders. And this is just creating the table props object that comes from the AWS CDK. If you're used to configuring 
DynamoDB tables with the CDK, this will all look very familiar. You configure a table name, the billing mode, partition keys, sort keys, all of that stuff. And you'll notice that this database props is used in two different places. One, of course, being my actual CDK code that actually defines my infrastructure. So I'm creating a new DynamoDB table and passing in them database props. You'll notice in here that I'm also creating Lambda functions and API gateways as well. This is a full API after all. And then equally, that this database props is also used in that startup code for my unit test. So now I'm using the exact same DynamoDB definition for both my CDK and for my unit tests. And I've actually defined a small extension method here, this as create request. And what this as create request does is actually adds an override to convert that DynamoDB props from the CDK to an actual create table request DynamoDB API call. So you'll notice throughout this code, I'm creating my key schema and I'm creating my key schema from the actual partition key property from my DynamoDB props. I'm optionally adding a sort key. If a sort key has been defined in my CDK, it will actually add that to my create table request that is sent to DynamoDB. And then finally, I return that create table request. So what I'm now doing as part of my startup code before any of my unit tests run is setting up a container image, running a Docker container, which is emulating DynamoDB. I'm grabbing the service URL. In this case, that would be localhost and then the, the port that DynamoDB local is running on. And then I'm actually going to run this create table request to DynamoDB. What this will ensure is that every single time my unit tests run, I get a completely fresh, completely empty DynamoDB database. I can guarantee the state of my table before every single test run. Let's actually see this in action. Now, if I jump over to my terminal, I can run a .NET test command and I can go test, product API test and actually run my unit tests. And you see that the actual Docker image is started. You can actually see the logs that come out of Docker here for the Docker container to start up, for it to be running. Then you'll actually see that the unit tests themselves execute and my tests pass. Excellent. In terms of what the tests are actually doing in this test containers sample project, you see I'm injecting that startup fixture, that startup code as part of my constructor of my unit test. And then I can actually grab the DynamoDB client that was initialized as part of my startup. And then when I initialize my product repository to using my tests, I pass in that instance of my DynamoDB client that has been configured to use localhost to use my emulator. And then I'm actually just calling my actual business logic. I'm calling the put product to create a product in my DynamoDB table. And then I'm actually trying to retrieve that product to check that I can get it and that the retrieved product has the correct name. Now this gives you a really, really interesting benefit here because you're now in essence testing that your infrastructure definition matches what your application is saying. You're, you're testing your infrastructure code using application and unit testing. To demonstrate that in a bit more detail, let's actually go over to this infrastructure definition. And you see the partition key that's going to be deployed to AWS. This is my CDK code, remember, it is defining a partition key called ID. Let's update that to be PK now, for example. So in this instance, I've broken my application. And to actually find this in the real world, I need to do a CDK deploy, push that up to AWS, run my integration test, wait for the integration test to run. Inevitably, they would all fail because I've broken the schema between my infrastructure definition and my application definition. And then I'd need to go back, redeploy, do all that other stuff. But now actually I can just come back to my unit tests and rerun my unit tests. And now what's gonna happen is actually this test is going to fail this time. And it's gonna fail because one of the required keys was not given a value. Remember the table that's been created in my local emulated version of DynamoDB has now a partition key called PK. But actually, if my product repository that's actually interacting with DynamoDB is expecting a partition key that's defined in this little static class here, expecting a partition key of ID. Now, if I was to fix my application code to match my infrastructure definition, rerun the test, and the test will now pass because they match. My infrastructure definition matches my application definition. What this doesn't give you, remember, is that ability to test some of these native service integrations. If this DynamoDB table happens to have DynamoDB streams enabled, 
And then I was using EventBridge pipes to pull the message off the streamer and publish them to EventBridge, for example. That wouldn't be handled with this scenario. But what this does allow you to do is to really closely test your infrastructure definition alongside your application code to check that you're not just bringing in any silly naming issues or you've spelt something wrong. You can get this really fast feedback loop really, really quickly before you push things out actually into AWS. This is really, really valuable for things like databases for really quickly iterating, whether it's on your DynamoDB queries, maybe you're using GSIs and you've got some complex query expressions going on. You can iterate really quickly, locally, test your definitions locally before you push that up to the cloud. But it does not mean that you don't need to integration test as well. You do need to do both. But fast feedback loops are something we as developers all love because it lets us know really quickly if the thing we've done has worked or not worked. So check it out. Challenge some of your preconceptions that you might have had with emulation because before this weekend, I was pretty strongly against it. Now, that attitude is starting to soften a little bit and I can see the value of having some element of emulation, especially when it's as simple as just integrating that with your existing test frameworks that you know and love. I'd love to hear what your experiences are working with emulators, good or bad, positive or negative. And until next time, keep on building.